My book, Soil Science for Gardeners, has been converted into an audiobook. The narrator for that was David Skalski, and his voice is really good. So I thought you'd enjoy listening to part of that book and learning more about soil science. Plants use nutrients from two main categories, non-mineral and mineral, originating from minerals. The non-mineral nutrients make up 96% of a plant and consist of oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. The plant absorbs CO2 from the air, which provides most of the carbon and some of the oxygen it needs, and takes in water and oxygen through the roots. The water is transported to leaves, where it is broken down into oxygen and hydrogen. Provided that the soil has a normal amount of water and air, a healthy plant has no problem getting all of the non-minerals it needs. Although mineral nutrients, like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, account for only 4% of a plant's weight, they are vital to its growth. The rest of this chapter will focus on mineral nutrients. Plants have four sources for mineral nutrients. Soil minerals, organic matter, nutrients adsorbed onto clay and humus, and the soil solution. These nutrients are generally not available to plants directly. Organic matter needs to decompose before this occurs. The nutrients adsorbed to soil and humus can be accessed by plants, but it is more likely that these enter the soil solution, the water that surrounds all the particles in soil and the plant roots, before they get to the plant. Ions. Before we discuss nutrients in more detail, it is important to understand some chemistry. You probably recognize the names of many nutrients, such as iron, zinc, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. But you may not know that these are all metals. For example, pure calcium is a dull silvery gray and looks like iron. We talk about plants using iron, calcium, and magnesium, but actually plants can't use any of these. Putting an iron nail in the soil does nothing to feed plants. They are able to use these metals only once they are converted into something called ions. When calcium is exposed to air, a chemical reaction with oxygen forms a type of rust, producing a white powder, calcium oxide, CaO, which contains one molecule each of calcium and oxygen. When CaO dissolves in water, calcium and oxygen separate into charged particles that are called ions. The calcium ion has a positive charge, a cation, and the oxygen ion has a negative charge, an anion. Remember the water magnets? One end of the water molecule has a positive charge, and the other has a negative charge. And it is this property that allows the calcium oxide to separate into two charged particles. The calcium, being positive, is attracted to the negatively charged end of the water molecule, and the oxygen is attracted to the other. Once the calcium is in the form of an ion, plants can absorb it through the roots and use it inside the plant. We talk about plants using calcium, but what they really use are calcium ions. This may seem like unimportant semantics, but it is critical for understanding how nutrients behave in soil and how they become available to plants. All of the mineral nutrients used by plants form some type of ion. Some are a bit more complex than the above calcium example, but the principles are exactly the same. What is salt? The general public uses the term salt to mean table salt, which is sodium chloride. Chemists, soil scientists, and this book use the term to refer to any compound that is made up of ions. Sodium chloride is one of many different types of salts. In water, it breaks up into sodium ions, Na+, and chloride ions, Cl-. Please see the accompanying PDF for a table titled Chemical and Ion Form of Nutrients. Compounds such as ammonium nitrate and potassium phosphate, found in synthetic fertilizer, are also salts, as is calcium oxide. Urea fertilizer is an organic molecule made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, and since it does not form ions in water, it is not a salt. Table salt, or road salt, releases sodium ions in water. All life, including plants, needs some sodium, but as the amount of sodium in soil increases, it can quickly become toxic to plants and microbes. 
it is best to keep sodium out of the garden. Salt can also be harmful to plants for a reason that is related to osmotic pressure. Ions in water act like strong magnets and pull water toward themselves. If one area has plenty of ions and a neighboring area has very few, water will move from the area with few ions to the one with more ions because a higher concentration of ions has a stronger pull for water. Plant roots use this phenomenon to their advantage. They keep a high concentration of ions inside the root, and this normally causes water to flow from outside the root into the root, which they then transport into the rest of the plant. Soil Myth Salt Kills Soil Microbes Many believe that the salts in synthetic fertilizer harm soil life, but that is not true. They dissolve in water, forming ions exactly the same as the ions released from organic material like manure or compost. They are essential for the growth of microbes and plants. Any chemical, no matter how useful, can become toxic at high levels. Even too much water will kill you. Provided fertilizers are used in appropriate amounts, they do not harm soil life. What happens if too much fertilizer is used? The salts in the fertilizer are released as ions that make the concentration of ions outside the roots higher than inside. This causes water to flow from inside the root out into the soil solution. With this loss of water, the plant experiences what is equivalent to drought conditions, and the upper leaves start to dry out. This is why lawn grass goes brown if you use too much fertilizer. The blades of grass look burnt because they can't get enough water from the roots. Movement of Nutrients in Soil Sand and silt particles have almost no electrical charge on their surface, so ions don't stick to them very well. When nutrient ions come into contact with these particles, they just keep moving along with the water. For this reason, rain easily washes nutrient ions out of sand and silt into the subsoil layers, which explains why such soils have low natural fertility. Clay and organic matter have both negative and positive charges, but they are mostly negatively charged. Both anions and cations stick to clay and OM very tightly, preventing water from washing them away. When rain flows through clay soil, or soil that contains a lot of OM, it does dislodge some nutrients and moves them deeper in the soil, but the effect is minor. Most nutrients remain stuck in place. The net effect is that nutrients move much more slowly in these soils than in sandy soil. Essential Plant Nutrients Essential nutrients are those that plants must absolutely have in order to survive. They include carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, which are obtained from air and water. The other essential nutrients, including the following, are absorbed through roots. Soil Myth Organic Nutrients Are Better it is believed that nutrients from organic sources are much better for plants than nutrients from synthetic fertilizer. This very common myth that is promoted by the organic movement is completely wrong. Most synthetic fertilizer consists of salt compounds. Good examples are ammonium nitrate, calcium carbonate, and potassium phosphate. When these dissolve in water, they separate into ions, namely ammonium, nitrate, calcium, carbonate, potassium, and phosphate. Plant roots can absorb all of these. When an organic source like manure or compost is added to soil, it slowly decomposes into the same ions found in synthetic fertilizer. The nitrate ion from an organic source is exactly the same as a nitrate ion from a synthetic fertilizer. Neither labs nor plants can tell the difference between the two sources once the ion has been released into water. Once you understand this, it becomes clear that both sources result in exactly the same nutrients. Nutrient ions can originate from an organic source, but they can't be any more organic than the ones from fertilizer. They are all inorganic. Used in larger amounts, macronutrients include nitrogen, N, phosphorus, P, potassium, K, calcium, Ca, sulfur, S, and magnesium, Mg. Because many soils contain plenty of Ca, S, and Mg, the main ingredients in fertilizers are N, P, and K. The micronutrients, or trace minerals, are boron, B, chlorine, Cl, manganese, Mn, iron, Fe, 
zinc, Zn, copper, Cu, molybdenum, Mo, nickel, Ni, and cobalt, Co. There is still some debate as to whether silicon, Si, nickel, Ni, chlorine, Cl, and cobalt, Co, are essential. Plants can use additional nutrients that are non-essential. This means plants will use them if available, but they do not need them in their diet. In some cases, they are found only in specific types of plants. Non-essential nutrients, also called beneficial nutrients, include aluminum, Al, selenium, Se, sodium, Na, vanadium, V, and gallium, Ga. Soil myth. Plants use lots of different nutrients. Numerous products on the market, including fish fertilizer, sea salt, and rock dust, promote the idea that more nutrients are better. For example, a product containing Australian sea salt claims that it contains 99 elements that are beneficial for plants. Some claim that since fish live in the ocean, they can also provide all of these nutrients. Azomite, a rock dust, has 67 essential minerals. According to Stanford University, sea salt contains only 42 elements, or 47 minerals. A plant uses at most 21, and some of these are not essential. Adding nutrients that plants can't use is a waste of resources. This brings the total of useful mineral nutrients to 21, not counting oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. I hope you enjoyed this excerpt from my book. If you'd like to learn more about soil science, have a look at these videos right here.